Papa was a rolling stone. Let us eat and 
and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Somebody say celebrate. Celebrate. I want to speak to you this morning as we celebrate the Father's Day under the anointing of the Spirit of God on the topic of the subject, Back in Love. Back in love. Back in love. Back in love. Yeah. Back in love. Father, my God, is once again, oh Lord, we're coming to your presence with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord God, for life, love, and spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for yet another day's journey, which we're so grateful and so glad. God, as we stand here behind this, your sacred desk, we pray, oh God, that you hide bags behind the cross so that we might see the Christ with the stones you see. And I render myself available to you. I pray, oh God, that you would fill my cup. Fill it until it overflows. Fill it to some man, some woman, some boy, some girl. Might come running and say, What must I do to be saved? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us right now. Acts, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive us of our sin, recognizing that all our sin will be true. Knowing without a shadow of a doubt, oh God, that you bless us, we shall be blessed. If you keep us, we shall be kept. If you preach to us, we shall be preached right now. So God, we thank you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, oh God, for your blessings on our heart. We love you today. We love you today. Lord. Sing this prayer of the Bible that is playing with the Son of Jesus the Christ with thanksgiving our souls. Back in love, back in love, back in love. Again. We find here in the Gospel according to me where Jesus the Christ tells a parable. A short allegorical story designed to illustrate or teach some truth. Religious principle or moral lesson. In other words, Jesus wanted to make sure that what he was saying was easy to digest for those who would simply listen. He wanted others to have no problem understanding the lessons of salvation. You see, church, too often we as Christians make life difficult for others when it comes to the Word of God. We make it challenging and not inviting we, when it comes to our witness. There are even times when our so-called testimony seems more like a threat than an invitation. You know, you better get right with God. You better do it now. You know your life ain't right. You know you messed up. A threat rather than an invitation. Even though the Bible says in Matthew 11 and 28, come unto me all who are with and have a later, and I will give you rest. That church is an imitation of love straight from Christ. Here we find in the book of Luke where a son, a son has come to his father requesting, no, 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 demanding that his father provide for him his portion of an inheritance immediately upon request. He was impatient and not willing to wait for his father to die. Ain't that so? He wanted his money and he wanted it right now. Isn't that something that and the children are so impatient they won't even wait for you to leave? Mm. When will I get the car? When will I get that money? When will I get those suits? When will I get those shoes? When will I get this? And when will I get that? No, when will you get these bills? <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm going to leave you something. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes in life, folks get so impatient. That's almost committing, like committing a crime against a family. Simply to get an inheritance. And simply to find yourself on lockdown for the rest of your life. This father exhibited the true meaning of fatherhood. You see, church, real fathers, righteous fathers, understand what it is to fall down, and they know what it is to forgive. Yes, Proverbs 24 16 says, For a righteous man falls seven times, 
But he doesn't not only fall seven times, the Bible says, and rises again. So if a righteous man falls seven times, then how many times are we supposed to forgive our children? You know those same children that always mess up. Those same children that always get in trouble. That same child that always want to talk back. Hello, like same child that always find themselves on lockdown. How many times are we supposed to forgive them? Well, Matthew 18, 21 and 22 says, Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? How often shall my child sin against me and I forgive him or her? Up to seven times? Here's Peter challenging Jesus the Christ, talking about up to seven times and questioning Jesus on how he's supposed to forgive and how many times he's supposed to forgive. This is what I like about John Christ. He said, I did not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Wow. You can't talk, God. Who do we think we are to question God and try to talk God? He said, up to seven times seven. How many times have I forgiven you? How many times have you lied to me? How many times have you walked away from me? How many times have you, have you been in trouble and I helped you and pulled you out? How many times have you stepped into the same pit and I pulled you up out of my pit? Mm. And the question is, how many times am I supposed to forgive? And then a righteous father, watch this thing. What I like about a righteous father, a righteous father is a protector. Even if a father has to let go of his child, he still has confidence that God will keep him or her from all hurt. Protect Abraham, 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 and his son Isaac. God said, you take your son Isaac, your only son. Wow. He put emphasis on your only son. Take your son Isaac, your only son, and offer him up as a bird. As a bird. Offering. In other words, I need you to take him up there. What I'm going to tell you is take him. I need you to set up the offering, I need you to put the wood in place, I need you to light it, I need you to stab him, and I need you to throw him on the fire. Huh? I know my parents used to say, I'm a set show behind on fire. But here was God saying, I want you to set your entire, I want you to burn your son. But Abraham had enough faith in God. Somebody say faith in God. He had enough faith in God that even if he realized that God had told him to destroy his son, that God was either going to provide a ram of the bush or he was going to raise him up from the dead. You ought to give God some praise like that. He protected his son, Father. Has he protected him with his faith? Yeah. Somebody say faith. Yeah. He protected him with his faith. You see, church, when a father's faith is strong, it becomes like a strong tower. Yeah. And when there is a strong tower in your life, your faith in God can say to the mountains in your life, be thou removed. Yeah. Tell somebody, move mountain. Move, move mountain. Move mountain. Here we are, here we are looking at a, a son, a father, and a son. Watch this thing, because folks didn't get it, folks didn't get it. He said he divided his wealth up between them. In other words, there was one still home, and he still gave him the money. And that being the eldest son, he, meant that, that he got two thirds, and the youngest son got one third. Yes, sir. How many times, how many times have you walked out of, out of the house and told your parents, I'm never coming back? I'm talking to the old years again. I'm never coming back. I left the house, I told my mother, I'm going to keep the work just like it is. 
It's how you leave the house that determines how you return. Come on, somebody. Everybody in here said to their parents, give me a portion, my portion of your wealth. Because I got to go. I'm big enough and I'm strong enough and I'm bad enough and I got to go exercise my oats. The Bible says that after the son of Lebanon, he began to get involved in some riotous living, partying all night long. I 
do when I mess up in this life? Every time I do, I mess up when I call my sister out of her name. I said, oh, you done messed up. <laughs> the one that dressed you, kept you dressed, to the point you were, you were sharp, you messed up. Today, 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 they rush up on a baby. I said, you try to hurry. 
But he rushed his son. And his son, when he got to speak, he said, Dad, I just want to say I'm sorry. Forgive me. I messed up. And I don't even need to be here. But I said, you go get myself. Go get him a grand. <laughs> we signified. Lord, right, you go get him a robe. We signified King Chip. You go get him sandals. We signified my love. You go get him. And then kill the fatty calf. We're going to have a celebration, a party. When is the last time you had a party for somebody who would come back? Yeah, yeah. They all been finished a lot of things. We can 
come into the house of prayer, yeah. create, magnify, and rejoice, yeah. and celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and celebrate one another. Yeah. When we were able to celebrate, guess what? I found myself back in the Yeah. 
all messed up all the time. We serve a God that wants us to rejoice and wants us to be happy, wants us to be filled, wants us to be whole. Don't stop Don't you stop Keep looking soon and we'll be back in love.
Father God, we thank you for this moment. God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're always welcome in this place. Not only to rule, but to super rule over our lives. We thank you for being with us today. Now, oh God, we ask a special blessing upon these fathers in this place. And we ask a special blessing upon those fathers who are on Facebook Live and those who are out there in the world. God, we ask that you put your hands of protection around them. Ask that you would gird them up on every side. Ask, oh God, that you would encourage them to be the righteous, the righteous men that you would have them to be. Those men who look to the hills who are coming back up knowing that they hope comes to you. Righteous men. Men who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Righteous men. Men who understand that none but the righteous shall receive you. Righteous men. Who are willing to go out to the highways and to the byways and to compel men, women, boys, and girls to come to you. Righteous. God, make us fisher of men. Because I firmly believe, God, that if you make us fishers of men, if we catch them, you will clean them in the name of Jesus. So we thank you. We thank you. We ask of God that you would just bless this day with your presence. Now, oh God, may your grace, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us. It's what and whatever. Let the children of the church of the living God say.